Greetings everyone, Cameron McCasland here, uh, coming at you with a couple more film recommendations. Last week, whenever I did my uh, top five movies that I thought were underappreciated, um, I recommended Chunking Express by Wong Kar Wai. A good friend of mine, Chuck Angel, asked me if I would recommend a couple more foreign films. Uh, it took a couple days to kind of think about that and how I wanted to do it, so what I did was I picked five movies, all from a different language. I wouldn't necessarily say that these are my favorite you know, foreign films or I don't know, just kind of some stuff that I think, you know, if you're just getting into it, this is stuff you should check out. So, um, oddly enough, all this stuff ended up being Criterion Collection, which can be rather expensive. I think Netflix has most of their stuff, so you can definitely, you know, rent it that way or uh, just pick them up where you can. I mean, it's worth the extra money sometimes versus paying, you know, $3 for a crappy movie or paying 10 or 15 for something that's good used in a shop. But anyways, without further ado, I'll get right into it. Uh, first thing I would recommend would be M by Fritz Lang. Uh, this came out in 1931. It uh, has Peter Lorre. This was actually Fritz Lang's first talking movie. He had done, you know, stuff like Metropolis, obviously, which is a big silent feature, uh, and like the Doctor of Abuse titles. Uh, some of that stuff had come out already. Um, Peter Lorre basically plays a child murderer, child molester, however you want to, you know, look into it that way. Um, of course, he came to the States later on and did a whole bunch of, you know, great movies. Casablanca, Maltese Falcon, um, Arsenic and Old Lace, and even he kept working and kept working until his later days when he started doing just some uh, really low grade stuff with Vincent Price, which again I am a fan of, but uh, you know, it's just a totally different thing than what M is or any of that other stuff that I had mentioned. Um, I don't know, this is real surreal. It kind of, it's weird because it kind of takes um, the viewpoint of he's got a disease and that's the reason that he's killing people as opposed to he's just cold blooded. Um, and there's this real mob mentality it's kind of you know i would say the difference between what is justice and what is vengeance uh very very neat movie very surreal um definitely check that one out um my next pick was from uh, 1948 it's bicycle thieves or the bicycle thief depending on you know uh when you saw it or who, who you asked uh this is a vittorio de sica film uh, this is an italian um the reason i think uh you chuck especially will like this movie uh, and for the rest of you out there, this is a movie about, you know, a guy just who wants to take care of his family. Uh, it it kind of starts out, you know, he's looking for a job, he's in the unemployment line. Um, you see him, you know, standing there, standing there, he finally gets a job hanging movie posters. But the problem is he needs a bicycle to do this. Uh, it's, you know, post-war and everything there is just kind of in shambles. So it's, it was just tough to get a job. So, you know, basically he takes him and his wife's bed linens, pawns them off to get the money to get a bicycle. And then the bicycle gets stolen. So the rest of the movie, it's just him and his son going around trying to find, trying to find the bicycle, and trying to find the guy who stole it before he has to go to work. You know, uh, the following day. Really strange because you know part of it is you know you start seeing him like thinking to himself, you know, is it okay for him to steal a bicycle since something was taken away from him? And at the same time, you see you know his father going a little bit mad, and the son who's just following him, you know, to the ends of the earth and doing the things that, you know, I don't know. It's like you're you're teaching your your kids, you know, these things and just trying to, the difference between right and wrong. So uh, definitely check this out. Um, next up from 1958 is Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress. Um, I could do a whole video on Kurosawa and just the, the great stuff that this guy's done. Obviously, um, the reason that I picked this one, I think that Toshiro Mifume, who plays, you know, the lead role in this, this is probably my favorite thing that he ever did. He's just a little bit crazy in it. Um, you have these two peasants which is where most of the story you see it from their view but they're leading these people you know uh, across the countryside uh they don't know that this is you know like a, a a princess and you know her general basically um loosely based you know some of the stuff in star wars um i don't know like george lucas is even i think he's on this dvd talking about that how you know, not so much that, I wouldn't say it's like, it's not like a direct port of it, but like the R2-D2 C-3PO was kind of based off these two peasants and seeing the whole movie through their eyes. Um, and at the same time, you do have, you know, a princess and a general in those movies that they're, you know, leading across space. So, you know, roughly, you know, or I'd say loosely based. So we're checking out if you haven't seen it. Um, next up is Pickpocket from 1959. This is in French from Robert Brisson. Um, he made a whole a lot of great movies that, um, I don't know, some people would say that this is the lesser of, uh, like, Balthazar and stuff like that, was, which is also a great movie, but this is one of my favorites. Um, <coughs> you see this guy who, 
he, he begins to steal almost out of necessity to survive and in, in turn it turns into an addiction. So, you know, he every time he meets a friend, he, it kind of, as the relationship builds, he kind of has to get out of it because he has this, you know, this wicked habit. Um, the cool thing about this movie is they use non-actors and which was kind of a big thing that was, you know, going around the time uh, during like French New Wave and all that. It's like just picking up a movie camera, grabbing whoever you could get and making a movie. But uh, I would say, you know, this is worth checking out. Uh, if you like this movie, there's a good chance you'll like the other stuff he's done. I, I do like this better than, you know, anything else that uh, I think Diary of a Country Priest and they like, say Balthazar are the, the two that everyone speaks very highly of. But check Pickpocket out as well. Um, the last thing that I'm going to recommend is from 1973. It's called Spirit of the Beehive. I just recently watched this for the first time. It had been recommended to me um, because of the use of the old Universal Monster movie Frankenstein, which I'm a big fan of. Um, very cool because, like, it, it takes place in, I want to say, late 30s, 19, or early 1940s. Um, you, you're in this this small, you know, Spanish town, and this guy brings a copy of Frankenstein in on a truck. And, you know, they it's cool because they, they show them setting up and people bringing in their own chairs and paying whatever, you know, what I don't even know exactly what they're paying, but just some small pittance for to go see a movie and everybody shows up. You have these um, two children who come in and one of them is just absolutely frightened by the film and the point that it drives her a little bit mad. And after they get home from it, they start talking about the movie and they start talking about, you know, is he real? You know, where can you see him? Everything else. And, you know, the one little girl lies to her sister and says, oh yeah, he, he's not dead. He's, he's here and he's a spirit and everything else. But uh, it's funny because... There's this, uh, just kind of like this abandoned place, and she keeps going back, and she keeps going back. Well, lo and behold, this guy jumps off a train, hurts himself, and ends up there, and so she can't decide if this is him, and they start hunting her down. It's very surreal, a lot of just weird stuff going on in that movie. I can honestly, I mean, I'm not terribly familiar. I've only seen it one time. I will say I enjoyed it. I need to watch it a couple more times, but definitely worth checking out if you're, um, I don't know, again, like this is all stuff that, you can get into if you want to say, okay, I want to see something from a different perspective, which is what I think foreign films are. I mean, um, I think DVDs done a lot, you know, a lot of good for that. I grew up in small town Texas. I'm not there anymore. I'm here in Nashville. But um, even with that, it's like, you know, you weren't able to get that stuff on TV. And now it's a little bit easier because you have cable television. There's all kinds of different selections. But even still, it's kind of tough to come by unless you know what you're going after. So um, I would recommend you know, checking out these movies. I'm looking into some other things. I will show you this one other thing, um, which years and years ago someone recommended to me, which is kind of like cliff notes for foreign films. This is all Italian stuff, but this is called My Voyage to Italy, which Martin Scorsese put out. It's a two-disc uh, DVD. I want to say it's like four or five hours long. I mean, it takes, it's just forever and ever, and it's great. Um, he did another one about American films as well, but this kind of just walks you through and shows you a couple clips, and he talks about, you know, why he fell in love with this and you know growing up uh, in New York where he did they used to play this stuff on television all the time that was you know back whenever either stuff was considered public domain or you know the the rights issues were, were worked out of course with the advent of color television a lot of these old black and white movies even if you could get the rights for them people wouldn't show them anymore because it wasn't you know they wanted this brand new like the NBC color peacock and all that fun stuff so it kind of got lost in the shuffle so I would say if you're, you know, wanting to get into some foreign stuff and you don't know where you want to go, check out these movies I recommended. Check this out. Um, also, I would love to hear your suggestions. If you've seen any of this stuff, tell me what you thought about it. Uh, or go out and watch it and come back and tell me, say, man, I love that movie. Or I totally hated it. You wasted two hours of my life. Uh, either way, um, if you do have any more questions about this stuff or if you want to see anything else, I'm just kind of starting to do some of these DVD uh, videos. So if there's anything you want to hear about or you want me to show, I've got tons of DVDs on this wall behind me and another one in front of me if you can believe that that's just about as big so you know let me know there's a good chance I've probably seen or at least heard of and can speak of it um, if you do like this also I ask that you you know hit the subscribe here uh, leave a comment below just tell me what you think I will catch you guys next time bye